Almost everything within Sona is seen as an object, be that a clip, a note in the PRV, an envelope, a transient marker, etc. Although in this section I'm working in a track view with clips, other views and objects behave in a similar manner with similar methods. I'll mention any differences in other views as we come across them. We can select objects by left clicking. If you want to select a clip without moving the now time, the clip needs to be in the clip header at the top if the clip header is visible, or in the top half of the clip if it's minimized. Clicking elsewhere will move the now time. That's as long as the left click sets now option is selected in the track view options menu. To make a time selection, we left click and drag in the clip or in the time ruler. Again, click in the bottom half of minimize clips. And if it's not minimized, click anywhere except the clip header. If the click is in the time ruler, it selects that time period for the currently in focus and any selected tracks. Selection will always follow any current snap settings, so make sure they are set to attain the behavior you want. There are several other ways of selecting time and objects. Selecting part of multiple tracks is done by click dragging through the required track at the same time as selecting the time section required. If the initial track is minimized, you must make the initial click in the bottom half of a clip. This will select adjacent clips, but you can always deselect any once they've been selected by control clicking on the track number. Another method of selecting a time area of multiple non-adjacent clips is to drag the time ruler. Drag the required time and then click on the track numbers that you wish to add. Holding the control key down will add or remove from the selection. Control click on an object will also remove a selected object from a selection. Tracks can be selected by clicking on their track number and they will follow any selected time. If you clear the time by pressing Ctrl A and then click a track number, the whole track is selected. Double clicking any track number selects all tracks. The Shift and Control keys can also be used here to add or subtract from a selection. Holding the Control key down allows you to deselect non-adjacent tracks, whereas the Shift key selects tracks between the two clicked tracks. A track with any object or part of an object selected is highlighted by a different background color of the track number area. Control A will select all, but only in the current focus view. For example, pressing Control A in the piano roll view only selects the notes and events in that view. Right click and drag to lasso select multiple clips, but for the whole length of a clip, not just a period of time. Note that any object the lasso touches, even if only partially, will be completely selected. To deselect all, as we've already seen, press Ctrl Shift A, or alternatively, click in an empty area of the view or project. Clicking in the upper half of the time ruler between two marker points will select the time between them. We'll look at markers shortly. The select module in the control bar can also be used to control selection. Remember, you may need to bring that into view if it isn't already. Clicking on the set from and set through points will set those points to the current now time position. These times will be reflected in the time display areas, as will any drag select time. Finally, the main menu, Edit Select submenu, offers us even more options and some of the keyboard shortcuts here may prove useful to your workflow and methods. Once clips or notes have been selected, we can audition them by pressing Shift plus Spacebar. Any selected areas or objects can now be edited with the editing tools and commands, and we'll cover editing tools later. Reference markers are markers that associate a name with a time point in your project. They can be created by right-clicking in a time ruler and selecting Insert Marker, or by pressing M. A marker is inserted at the point where the now time is, and if during playback they are auto named with a letter, or if playback is stopped, a dialog box appears allowing you to name it. They can be renamed, moved, locked or unlocked by right clicking on them. 
and then making the changes in the marker dialog box. They can also be moved by left click and dragging them. But make sure that you're not in the zoom area of the timeline. When the cursor is over a marker, a white outline of an arrow appears. Left clicking will show an M to indicate that the marker is selected. They can also be copied by control click and dragging. And the marker dialog box pops up allowing you to rename it. Cancelling it cancels the operation. They can be deleted by left clicking on them and pressing delete. And shortcuts for moving to the next and previous markers are control shift and page down or control shift and page up respectively. Markers can also be used as pitch markers. That's set in the marker dialog box and groove clips that have follow project pitch markers checked will respond to these markers. Again, there is a module for marker navigation. Using the previous and next icons, we'll move through the markers in the same way as the control shift page up, page down. New markers can be created with the insert marker icon. And they can be selected as well from the drop down. We also looked at the marker view earlier. That's brought up from the views menu. And from here, we can add markers and also delete several markers at once using the delete icon. They're useful for marking out areas of a project that jump to reference points. If we select a period of time, we can set a special pair of markers known as loop markers. We can do that by drag selecting a time reader in the ruler and then right clicking and selecting set loop points or by pressing shift L. The loop is indicated in the time ruler by a pair of yellow markers joined by a yellow band. This loop point can be moved by click dragging on the band when a double headed arrow line appears. The start and end points can also be moved by click dragging on them. An L appears to show that it's a loop marker. When looping is on and the now time reaches the end of the loop, it will return to the start time and continue to do that until looping is turned off. Clear the loop markers by switching them off. The loop module in the control bar performs similar functions with an icon to turn the loop on and off. There is a set loop to selection icon and the loop start and stop time indicators show the current loop area if any. Note that a loop area can be defined but not necessarily active. The previously mentioned yellow bar or on off switch will indicate that. When it is active, return to start also responds differently. It will return to the start of the loop on its first press or the start of the project on a second press. A subsequent press returns it to the start of the loop again. Now we're going to take a look at zooming. There are many ways to zoom in and out of regions and you may already have noticed me using some of them. At any time we can undo a view change, including zooming, by pressing Alt plus Z. Alt plus Shift plus Z will redo the view change, or by holding down the right mouse button and then clicking the left one. Holding the left mouse button down and clicking the right will redo the change. We can also use a time ruler for zooming in and out. To do this, click and drag up or down in the top half of the time ruler where the cursor changes to a magnifying glass. Dragging down zooms in, and dragging up zooms out. Zooming can also be done with the zoom controls found in the bottom right corner of the various views. There's a separate view for horizontal and vertical zoom, and either click or hold on the icons, or click and drag the zoom fader. Pressing Z will switch to the zoom tool, 
or press and hold it to temporarily activate it. This can then be used to lasso to select a zoom region. Remember, you can undo quickly by right mouse button hold and left click. Keyboard shortcuts for zooming in and out are the control key in combination with the arrow keys. Up and down zooms in and out vertically and left and right horizontally. Holding the Alt key down while using the mouse wheel also zooms in and out. The settings for that are adjusted in the track view menu under the options. Mouse wheel zoom options. Here the zoom factor for each plane can be set as well as which area of the program is the focus point while performing the zoom in and out. It's also possible to set whether both planes zoom at the same time. If this is unchecked, Alt plus mouse wheel zooms vertically and Alt control and mouse wheel zooms horizontally. Remember we've already looked at auto zoom. This is turned on and off with Shift Z. And whichever track has focus is the one that's zoomed. When auto zoom is switched off, there are other shortcut key presses to use as well. Pressing F will fit all tracks vertically into the current size track view. And Shift F will fit the entire project into the window. There are also choices for these in the track view views menu. We can also use the navigator that we looked at earlier for moving around the project. The navigator pane is at the top and opened by pressing Alt plus N. Click dragging the divider will resize the pane and this can then be used to zoom in and out as well as navigate the project. Hide it again by pressing Alt N. It's possible to resize multiple tracks by multiple selection and holding down the shift key while resizing one of them. As soon as the mouse button's released, all of the selected tracks resize. As with zooming, there are several ways of scrolling a project. One way is to use the regular window scroll bars and arrows. You can scroll horizontally or vertically. We can also use the click and drag method in the top half of the time ruler, but instead of clicking up and down, we drag left or right. Another very handy method of scrolling is to hold down the control key and use the mouse wheel. Note that scrolling a project does not move the now time. I briefly mentioned widgets and the track control manager in the interface tool video. So let's take a closer look at that. The various groups of controls are referred to as widgets and we can control which widgets are visible via the presets. These can be selected from the top of the track header or cycle through using the shift with the left and right arrow keys. We can edit these presets or create our own using the track control manager. Let's use that to create our own preset. Select it from the bottom of the drop down box and that opens the track control manager's interface. We'll click on new to create a new preset and then click in the name the box. Then click in the name box to give it a name. I'm going to call this Effects and Sends. As I only want this to affect audio strips, as I only want this to affect audio strips, I'm just going to uncheck the widgets that I don't want to see. That will be all of them except the effects and auxiliary. The auxiliary is just another term for send. Once that's done, click on OK. As you can see, each MIDI instrument bus or surround bus can each show different widgets within the same setting. It's entirely up to you how you use them. Once finished, click on OK. I can now select that from the drop down. If I maximise one of the tracks, you'll see the only thing that we can see there now is the effects and the sends. For now, I'm going to change the widgets back to all, and that way we can see all of the controls.